Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. I hope all of you are really eager to learn something new and this is guys the right destination for all of you. So let's begin today's class. I hope all of you are aware of the live classes for RBI SEBI and NABARD and about our mobile application as well. So let me quickly jump to the question number one. Where will the British Indian Army Memorial be established? So here guys, the right answer is option A, Scotland. So in Scotland, this British Ar Indian Army Memorial will be established in order to commemorate or, and honor the uh, sacrifices that Indian Army soldiers have made in the world wars okay so where exactly will this memorial be established it will be established at glasgow okay i hope you re are uh, remembering that glasgow is the city where the cop26 of unfccc took place last year last last year and the uh, cop27 is hosted by egypt okay so this is it. Apart from this, uh, you don't have to know anything else. Just one thing that it is going to be Scotland's first permanent memorial wall to recognize the service and sacrifice of the British Indian Army soldiers. Question number two is how many Vande Bharat Express trains are operational as of January 2nd, 2023? So here guys, seven Vande Bharat Express trains are operational and why is the number important? Because recently Prime Minister inaugurated or you can say flagged off the seventh Vande Bharat Express. Okay, so it is uh, one of the super fast trains in India and its seventh, uh, you can say uh, seventh train has been inaugurated from Havda station to New Jalpaiguri, which is in West Bengal only. So this seventh uh, Vande Bharat Express is going to run from uh, Havra to New Jal Jalpaiguri in West Bengal. So here we have the list of the Vande Bharat Express trains. The very first train was from New Delhi to Varanasi and it is still operation. All these seven trains are still operational. Then we have New Delhi to Katra, then New Delhi to Am and Andorra in Himachal Pradesh, Mumbai to Gandhinagar, Chennai to Mysore, Bilaspur to Nagpur, uh, and Havra to uh, New Jal Paiguri in West Bengal. So these are the seven trains. I hope you can remember these seven trains. And even if you are not able to memorize the, uh, the routes, you should be aware of at least the numbers and the trains, at least the major ones. For example, New Delhi to Varanasi, New Delhi to Katra, and New Delhi to Am Andor, and the latest one, Havra to ne New Jal Paiguri. Now, kitni hi rahe hai? Sirf teen trains rahe hai. That is Mumbai to Gandhinagar, Chennai to Mysore, Bilaspur to Nagpur. Bas itne mein mehnat karni hai. Thodi si yad kar lo. Baaki to zada kuch itna effort lagega nahi isme honestly. Okay. Now coming to question number three. That is what is the target of the Amrit Bharat Station scheme? So first of all, what is the scheme and what is the basic idea behind this scheme? So let's know about it, but first know the answer. The answer is 1000 stations are going to be remodeled under the Amrit Bharat station scheme. Now, what is the uh, factual point? So first of all, Ministry of Railways has launched this Amrit Bharat station scheme. And under this scheme, the existing railway stations will be equipped with modern facilities. For example, there would be a play station or the playing facility for the children. Waiting room would be modernized and existing infrastructure will be modernized. And at the same time, new facilities to modern modernize the existing railway stations will be introduced. Okay, so that is the basic idea of this Amrit Bharat station. And uh, here you can see that the objective is to prepare master plans of the railway stations and implement them in phases to enhance the facilities including and beyond the minimum essential amenities okay so beyond the minimum essential amenities like water sanitation and waiting room area new facilities will be introduced okay as i already told you the coverage would be thousand stations more than thousand stations are the coverage okay and implementation will be done by the uh, done as per the needs of the railway station and this point is not very important okay so that is all about the amrit bharat station i hope you have understood it well 
Now moving on to question number four. Union Minister Shri Anurag Thakur has released the official Government of India calendar for the year 2023. Mission life is the theme of which month? Okay, now the right answer here is July. Now before going into the details, I have one question for all of you, and my question is that you have to tell me that Anurag Thakur is the minister of which ministry? Okay, so. Anurag Thakur has released this official calendar for 2023, and you will be very, uh, I would say, amazed to know that for every month we have a specific theme, and the overall theme of the 2023 would be uh, the uh, "Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas," and "Sabka Vishwas" would be the idea. So that's the idea on which the calendar has been drawn, and the theme would be "Naya Varsh, Naya Sankalp." Okay. Now, what is the difference between the idea and the theme? idea is that uh, what was there in the mind of the creator the in the mind of the creator of this calendar would be that the vikas should be for all okay so we should have a con uh, collaborative effort a collaborative development and the theme on which the uh, on which the government will work throughout the year is nay varsh nay sankalp now these new sankalps these new determinations are categorized or you can say are segregated into every month in the form of new theme okay i hope you are understanding the difference between the idea that is sabka saath sabka vikas sabka vishwas that's the broad underlying aid idea then we have the theme that is nay varsh nay sankalp okay that means that's the underlying vision for every month and that vision has been broken down into uh, you can say separate themes for each and every month now let's understand the themes so for Jan january the theme is breaking the shackles of the colonial mindset and moving on the path of duty towards the nation so kartavya path i hope you are aware that the uh, rajpath uh in new delhi has been renamed as the kartavya path so that is the theme of january uh that means we need to break the shackles of the colonial mindset and one of the measures or you can say one of the ways in which the government is trying to break the shackles of the colonial mindset is renaming the cities at least some cities which needs renaming are being done okay for example there is a station in uh bihar which is named as baktiyarpur and this baktiyar was the person was the person who burned down the nalanda so such cities need a rechanging okay renaming is needed for these cities so in a way the renaming is uh fine but in some other way it is also not fine because it is costing a lot to the government to the exchequer and not every city needs reach renaming okay now coming to february kisan kalyan is the theme coming to march nari shakti is the theme because we have the international day of uh, women in march then in april we have shikshit bharat may skill india is going to be the theme june fit india hit india because in june we celebrate the international day of yoga on 21st june so that is why this theme has been chosen then we have july mission life okay so mission life i hope you know that it is the lifestyle for environment the full form of life and what's the basic idea of it the basic idea is to create the awareness among the people so that they adopt the sustainable measures so that they uh, harm the nature at the very uh, you can say uh, in a very uh, less manner okay so reduce reuse and recycle these are the three focus areas of this mission life then august is focused on khelo india september ka theme hai vasudhaivam kutumbakam which means the world is one family then october is food security then november is self reliant india and december is ashtt lakshmi so this ashtt lakshmi is the eight north indian states on which the government is trying to focus upon okay so that was the calendar of the government for the year 2023 and you can clearly see that majority of these uh you can say focuses are on the social sector so in a way it is very good that we have such a calendar coming out and let's see what the government can do in these areas question number 5 india will assume the chairman ship of the plenary of the vasinar um uh, 
अरेंजमेंट फॉर वन ईयर ड्यूरिंग दी ट्वेंटी सिक्स एनुअल प्लेनरी ऑफ दी वासन अरेंजमेंट हेल्ड इन वियना ऑस्ट्रिया The 42 member Wassenaar agreement is a voluntary export control regime that monitors the transfers of conventional weapons and dual use goods. When did India join this group? Okay, so India joined this group in 2017. Now I hope you are aware of this fact as well that India not only joined Wassenaar agreement in 2017 but it also joined SCO in 2017. Okay, so that's the importance of this year. now we have read in the question itself that india has assumed the chairmanship for one year for this group now who exactly is going to represent india in this group so that person is jaydeep majumdar okay so he is going to be the face of india in the wassenaar arrangement who is headquartered in vienna austria okay and it is a 42 member country sorry a 42 member grouping and india became the 42nd member of this group okay now what is this wassenaar arrangement let's know about it as well so wassenaar arrangement is a voluntary export control regime and it basically works to control the export of the conventional we weapons and dual use goods okay so it is uh, just like your non proliferation treaties for the nuclear weapons this is for the conventional weapons so that the export and supply of the weapons can be controlled across the world okay so plenary is basically the highest decision making body in this uh, grouping and the secretariat of this grouping is in vienna austria and it was created in 1996 so these are some of the factual informations related to this grouping which is important for all of you to remember from your exam perspective okay question number 6 which state has given the industry status to the tourism sector in the state so here assam is the right answer now why has assam given this status to the tourism sector now guys industry status is important because once a particular sector gets the status the sector is also liable to get so, uh, certain benefits from the government which is accrued to the industry okay so that is why the industry status is important which article of the indian constitution provides for the delimitation of the lok sabha seats after the completion of the census so that question you would feel like this is completely out of syllabus question although current affairs does not have any syllabus but still there is a broader outline in your mindset that uh, the questions would be either from the current affairs current news uh, current events current schemes or whatever is there in the news but why is the question from the from the constitution being asked here so guys let me tell you that this question is also related to current affairs but however the uh, i would say the question is twisted okay it is, so let's first know the answer the answer is article 82 now what is the news the news is that the election commission of india has commenced the process of delimitation of the uh, state assembly and parliamentary constituencies of assam okay the last delimitation happened in 1976 and the current delimitation is happening on the basis of the 1971 census okay so that is the news the delimitation is happening although the constitution of india provides for the delimitation to happen after every census okay so here you can clearly see that article 82 of the indian constitution provides that upon the completion of each census the allocation of the seats in the house of the people to the states and the division of each state into territorial constituencies shall be readjusted by such authority which means that delimitation will happen after every census is con conducted so lok sabha constituencies will be readjusted on the basis of the delimitation commission in 2026 okay those who are not understanding what is the meaning of delimitation and what is the meaning of this entire exercise don't worry guys i am going to tell you that but i just want to go through the knowledge nuggets first and then i will tell you the entire process or the need of this activity okay so the article 170 states that the states will also get divided into territorial constituencies as per the delimitation act after every census the delimitation commission is appointed by the president of india and the work
and it works in collaboration with the election commission of india okay now what is delimitation okay. so guys delimitation is nothing but the exercise of dividing the state or the uh, territory into constituencies so that the election can be uh, held in that constituency i hope you are aware that every uh, area in india is divided into constituencies and how are the constituencies decided the constituencies are de decided on the basis of population okay so that is the basic idea so after dividing the territories into constituencies the elections are conducted so every territory for the purpose of the lok sabha election and for the purpose of the legislative assembly election are divided now when the jammu kashmir state was reorganized into union territories of jammu kashmir and ladakh the delimitation commission was set up to provide for the constituencies when telangana was separated from andhra pradesh the delimitation commission was set up and similarly when every states get independence from the existing state the delimitation commission is set up so that the constituencies of that particular state for the states legislative assembly can be decided and also to decide that how many seats for the lok sabha will be drawn from the particular new state okay so i hope you are getting the idea so that's the basic idea question number 8 Nandini is the brand of which state's milk cooperative? So here, Karnataka is the right answer. Now, why is the Nandini brand in use? The reason is that Union Home and Cooperative Minister Amit Shah has inaugurated a mega dairy at Mandya in Karnataka. Okay, so this mega dairy is developed at a cost of two sixty crores, and it has the capacity to produce. 10 lakh liters of milk per day and this capacity can be enhanced to 14 lakh liters per day now what is the important fact from this entire thing the important fact first is the location of this mega dairy second is the capacity of this dairy okay because it is a mega dairy therefore its capacity is important now dandani which is a brand of the karnataka milk federation it has partnered with the amul cooperative which is by far by so far the nation's largest milk cooperative so these two have co collaborated and they are going to set up the primary dairies and also provide mentorship to the dairy farmers and amul is also going to provide the technical support to the nandini brand okay basically the karnataka milk federation and the dairies in karnataka the national dairy development board and the ministry of cooperation will also establish primary dairies in every village so that the people of the village can get the uh, benefit of dairy and get allied income as well okay now my question from all of you is you have to tell me that who is the current chairperson of national dairy development board Question number nine is: Indian Army has received a 3D printed house dwelling unit, which is a disaster resilient structure that complies with Zone Three earthquake specifications and green building norms. Where is the unit established? So, guys, it is established at Ahmedabad Containment Board. Okay, so I hope you must have heard about this news earlier as well. It is a very old news. Right now, just the unit has been handed over to the Indian Army, and the formal inauguration ceremony was conducted. So this dwelling unit has been conducted, or you can say constructed, by using the three D printing technology. Now in Europe, this three D printing technology is being used rampantly to construct the houses and units. And once this modern age technology comes into uh, the scenario, it is going to be a really big, I would say, challenge for the unskilled labor because the in India. we which is a labor intensive country majority of our laborers are unskilled people and they are engaged in the activities like agriculture construction and uh, the uh, the textile labor is also there so a lot of the unskilled labor is also in the construction sector which is going to get harmed when this 3d printing technology goes rampant in india 
So let's see what is going to happen because the modern age technology has uh, has an impact on each and every person's job. So we are just going to say, see what is going to happen. Now coming back to the news, so this 3D printed house has been developed in Ahmedabad Containment Board and it is constructed by the Military Engineering Services, which is uh, an arm of the Indian Army in collaboration with MyCorp Private Limited. Okay, and they have used this 3D rapid construction technology to develop this 3D printed house, which is a disaster resilient as well as the earthquake, uh, you can say earthquake immune structure. Next question is which countries are separated by the Strait of Hormuz? So Iran, UAE, Saudi Arabia and Iran, Iran and Oman. So, guys, what is the right answer? The right answer is option E. Iran, UAE and Oman are separated by the Strait of Hormuz. Okay. So, let me show you the map first. Then we can... ...discuss the news. So, guys... I hope all of you are aware what a strait is. A strait is a narrow channel of water uh, that separates two large bodies of water. Okay, so here you can see there is Arabian Sea and this is the Persian Gulf which is separated or you can say connected by the Strait of Hormuz. So this narrow channel of water is the strait and it is known as the Strait of Hormuz. Here we have Iran, here we have Oman and this is UAE, this is Qatar. Okay. Now, why is this Strait of Hormuz important? Because this strait is used by oil and gas tankers and this is written on the Google Maps itself. So, it is showing the importance of this particular strait. Okay. So, these countries which you can see on the map, Saudi Arabia, Oman, UAE, Kuwait, Iraq, Iran, these are some of the biggest, you can say, oil suppliers in the world and the members of OPEC and Qatar especially is one of the largest natural gas suppliers in the world so all of these countries use this strait to sell their products to different countries so that is why this strait of hormuz is of utmost importance now what is the news the news is that iran and uae have conducted this uh, conducted a military drill in this strait of hormuz okay now guys there would be a question in your mind that why not uh, why uh, why not the Saudi Arabia and Iran are the correct options okay of the question okay because the reason is that Saudi Arabia and Iran are separated by the Persian Gulf and not by the Strait of Hormuz. Strait of Hormuz separates the UAE and Oman from Iran okay. So I have already told you that a military drill took place and uh, the Strait of Hormuz separates the uh, two countries, Iran and Oman, and also your UAE. It is an important strait because Saudi Arabia, Iran, UAE, Kuwait and Iraq, all of them supply their oil. And uh, Qatar, which is the world's largest LNG sub, uh, exporter, also supplies its uh, gas from the Strait of Hormuz itself. Next question is which IIT hosts the BRDO Industry Academia Ramanujan Center of Excellence? So here IIT Madras is the right answer. Okay, now what is this BRDO Industry Academia uh, Ramanujan Center of Excellence? This is basically a center of excellence or a research center where the industry, the academia and DRDO, all of them are coming together and now they are going to research on new technologies, okay, which can be used in the national defense and security of the nation. That's the basic idea of this center. So, what are the key points to remember? One is this key point and another one is IIT Madras. That's all. Two key points are there from this news. So, IIT Madras and DRDO Industry Academia Ramanujan Center of Excellence. These two are important. Next question is under which scheme is the Prajwala challenge launched by the union government? <laughs> Day and RLM is the right answer. Okay. So guys, 
दीनदयाल अंडोदिया योजना नेशनल रूरल लाइवलीहुड मिशन हैज लॉन्च द प्रज्वला चैलेंज नाउ दिस इज अ चैलेंज सो इन दिस चैलेंज द इनोवेटर्स आर इनवाइटेड टू प्रोवाइड सोल्यूशन फॉर सर्टन रूरल प्रॉब्लम नाउ वट काइंड ऑफ रूरल प्रॉब्लम आर बीन टारगेटेड थ्रू दिस प्रज्वला चैलेंज फर्स्ट इज फोकस ऑन वुमेन एंड मार्जिनलाइज सेक्शन ऑफ द कम्युनिटी second one is localized models sustainability cost effective solutions and the multi sectoral ideas and solutions etc okay now the shortlisted candidates are going to get the prize okay the shortlisted candidates will get the mentorship and the top 5 candidates will get a prize of rupees 2 lakh the website is this www.prajwalachallenge.com now why is the website important the website is important because i remember that in one of your rbi grade b examination there was a question on the website itself okay so i don't remember the exact question but there was a question on the website in which the website url was asked from so this highlights the importance of remembering or knowing at least about the urls or the websites of certain challenges okay so this is the website do remember prajwalachallenge.com is the website there is nothing uh, much to much difficult in this website's name then the prajwala challenge will also be shared with the manthan uh, portal of the office of principal scientific advisor and the bimstech atal innovation mission portal okay now what's the idea of it the idea behind this is that we need to spread the prajwala challenge to as many people as it can okay so that's the basic idea now guys we have a specific knowledge nugget related to bimstack so let's have a look at the bimstack organization so bimstack stands for bay of bengal initiative for multi sectoral technical and economic cooperation and it is a regional organization okay it was created in 1997 6 june 1997 and on 6 june we celebrate the bimstack day because on this day this organization was created and uh, it was created by signing the bangkok declaration earlier it was the bistec organization because bangladesh india sri lanka thailand were the partners of this organization later on myanmar nepal and bhutan also joined the organization and it became the bimstack organization okay bimstack is a sectoral collaboration and i'm going to tell you the sectoral collaborations meaning but first know the headquarter is in dhaka and the secretary general is tenzin lekpal who is from bhutan now sectoral collaboration means that every country is going to provide specific knowledge in a specific sector for example india is going to work upon security and uh, when working upon security uh, if india discovers any new technology so that technology will be shared with all the other sector sec, other members of the bimstack okay the next question is which bank has collaborated with india accelerator to launch the i3 launch pad a program created to nurture and co innovate with the startup ecosystem in india so here icici bank is the right answer now guys this i3 stands for the three launchers or you can say three founders of this program first is this india accelerator second is icici bank and third is infosys finacre so i3 basically means the three i's involved in this launch pad okay now what is this launch pad it is basically a program for the startups to provide the help to the startups now what kind of help will be provided the help will be provided in their uh, product creation and in the scale up stage okay market reach may be these organizations are going to provide help to the startups is open to startups across all industries and in and it will onboard two cohorts a year okay so two groups will be onboarded on this i3 launch pad and every cohort will get support from the i3 launch pad basically these three i3s okay so 12 to 18 startups in each cohort will get support and the sectors in focus will be the fintech the enterprise uh, technology the saas that is software as a service enterprises the prop tech wealth tech sustainability green tech and insurtech so all these sectors will be focused upon in the first cohort that means 
that the companies, the startups which are booming in these sectors are going to be picked by the I3 launchpad for mentorship. Next question is recently National Commission for Indian Startup of Medicine and the Central Council for Research in Ayurvedic Sciences, the two institutions under the Ministry of Ayush have launched Smart Initiative to boost the scientific research in priority healthcare research areas through Ayurvedic colleges and hospitals. What does S stand for in SMART? So here, the full form of SMART starts with scope. The scope is the right answer. The full form is scope for main mainstreaming Ayurvedic research in teaching professionals. That's the basic idea. And from the name itself, the very objective of this program is clear. So, the National Commission for Indian System of Medicine and the Central Council for Research in Ayurvedic Sciences have basically launched a smart program to boost the scientific research in the priority healthcare research areas through the Ayurvedic colleges and hospitals. So, the responsibility of conducting the research and increasing the outreach of the research has been given to the colleges and hospitals of the Ayurveda. Okay. The next question is which university? Indian Science Congre Congress. So here, RTM Nagpur University is the right answer. So first of all, it is going to be the 108th edition of the Indian Science Cong Congress and RTM Nagpur University is going to host it from January 3rd to January 7th. So it was already conducted. The theme is Science Technology for Sustainable Development with Women Empowerment. And 2023, guys, is the year of uh, international year of millets. And uh, this has been mentioned here mistakenly because this Indian Science Congress has nothing to do with millets as such. Okay. So it's just a reminder for you. Do remember the year in which we are living as of now is the international year of millets. So you may come across certain, uh, I would say, projects or initiatives that will be launched by the state or the central government for boosting millets. Next question is national campaign on rice that is rising India through spiritual empowerment was organized by the Brahma Kumaris at Mount Abu, Rajasthan. The foundation stone of the Brahma Kumaris silence retreat center was also laid recently. Where will the center be developed? So it will be developed at Sekandrabad, okay, which is in Telangana. So this is nothing but a campaign. And uh, it was organized by the Brahma Kumaris, which is an organization uh, in Mount Abu, Rajasthan. Okay, and uh, during the conference itself or the campaign, you can say the retreat center, the Kumar Brahma Kumaris Silence Retreat Center uh, foundation stone was laid in Sekandrava. And also the foundation stone for the Brahma Kumaris Auditorium and Spiritual Art Gallery was laid in Indore. Okay, now this is... This is only the thing that you need to remember from this news. Apart from this, there is nothing much. The next question is, where is the Siam Bridge located? So, it is located in Arunachal Pradesh. So, this bridge has been developed by the Border Roads Organization. Okay, so that's the basic idea. And the Siam Bridge is across the border, uh, not across the border, near the border of uh, India and China, so near the line of actual control. So it is going to give an edge to the Indian military uh, whenever there is a warlike situation or if we have to supply the products or in logistics, this bridge is also going to be a marvel for India. Okay. Next question is Croatia has joined the Schengen area, a term used for the countries in Europe which have abolished visas across their borders, allowing the residents to move freely. How many of the European Union countries are part of this grouping? So here 23 guys is the right answer. Now I hope you remember that now in European Union, we have 27 members after the Brexit. Okay. So what is a Schengen area? Schengen area is basically this area. Okay. So here in this area, the members of these countries can move freely across the other countries border and they don't need visa. Okay, that's the basic idea of a Schengen area. Now, what is the meaning of these different colors? So, first of all, the colors, the blue colored countries are those countries which are not a part of the European Union, but still 
they are a part of the schengen area for example sweden is a part of european union but the residents of sweden can also travel to norway without any visa and vice versa as well okay norway residents can also move to sweden without any visa requirements now the yellow color means that these are the part of the european union but these countries have not uh, accepted the schengen area uh rule you can say now these countries are obliged to do so and they will soon join the schengen area because they are a part of the european union okay now you can clearly see the croatia which is also a part of the uh, uh, european union has also joined the schengen area which means that the members from any of these countries can now travel to croatia without visa and the residents of croatia can also go to any other country without visa okay so this is croatia and these are the countries uh, surrounding croatia okay agreement was first signed in 1985 then we have 1990 schengen area convention in schengen luxembourg and after which this framework became a prominent thing and all these countries agreed to it okay another thing which croatia has done is that it has changed its currency to euro now the capital of croatia is zagreb currency is euro and the language is croatian croatia was the 20th country to join the european union and it is surrounded by the adriatic sea okay so the the sea here is adriatic sea <coughs> <coughs> Croatia guys was a part of the Yugoslavia which broke up in 1991 to 1992 okay so basically these countries which are a part of the you can say balkan peninsula these countries were once a part of the Yugoslavia and after its break up in 1991 to 1992 these countries gained their independence okay so croatia was one among them next question is who has been appointed as a brand ambassador of bandhan banks jahan bandhan wahan trust marketing campaign so here saurav ganguly is the right answer okay and it is just a marketing campaign to increase the reach of this bank so that is all now my question from all of you is you need to tell me the tagline of the bandhan bank last question of the day is who has been appointed as a state icon of bihar for the elections by the election commission of india so here mathili thakur is the right answer who is a singer okay so this is mathili thakur and she is a folk singer she has been appointed as a state icon of bihar by the election commission of india and we are related to thakur we have a very interesting fact that she won the ustad bismillah khan yuva puraskar of the sangeet natak academy uh, in the year 2021 so that's the important fact about her now guys uh, uh, we have completed all the questions now in the end i just want to say that guys this is our number in case if you want to give any feedback to us you can give us on this number uh, be it a positive feedback be it a negative feedback you are free to give it so provide your feedbacks to us on this number and have a good day and i hope you have enjoyed the lecture and in case you have any kind of confusion or anything you want to share you can mention it in the comment section or as i have already told you that the number is there on whatsapp as well so you can share your comments or the feedbacks through the whatsapp as well thank you so much guys for watching the video have a good day bye bye